recording on switch. Uh, okay. All right. So game is on, folks. They've chosen their lists and a little surprisingly uh, to me, you know, and Brett has his reasons. Brett, you know, is, is a well-experienced player. He's got his um, Drogo list that we saw earlier against Steve. So we got Drogo, and let us see, do we take Roos? We did take Roos. Uh, Roos um, is going to be the matchup. Very cool. So uh, it's here we stand. This mission has been kind of maligned <laughs> by the gamers. Uh, I've already said it before. I've chosen each mission through uh, random dice generators, so... You know where the dice, as it's as it were, land is what we've got. I personally am a big fan because I like that this mission adds another cool level of complexity, where you have to you know count how many points are in the quarters. You kind of predict your opponent's movements. Your NCUs can do more things than just the tactics board. Uh, I understand that it's a bit of a pain to play in real life because you need quarters, but it's also really not that hard. I find that when I play in real life, what I do. Um, Note that Rich won the dice off. He's putting a corpse pile particularly into the middle to help with the panic. Uh, I just put a dice in the middle of the table, and that kind of tells you where the quarters are. And then when it matters, you have to actually check which quarter in. You can go in and measure, but the dice normally is good enough as a, as a, as a guideline as to which quarter units are in. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I think this mission just has so much cool extra thinking that, that occurs that which is why I, I do like it myself um the other thing too is i find that a lot of events sometimes cancel out uh you know a lot of the missions they don't play things with the green tact uh, green mission cards like winds of winter or dark winds dark words they don't play this mission because of the weird deployment and the weird uh you know complexity so that's like three out of nine missions you've taken out. People, they don't play Fire and Blood because Fire and Blood's probably, in my opinion, the worst mission since it doesn't, you know, promote aggression and movement. So now you're going from nine missions down to five missions. So it really limits the pool and um, I think, you know, all the missions are a fair game to, to play. And you should be prepared to play any of the five missions. So it looks, uh, terrain-wise, not too unpredictable here. Um, Rich put down a central corpse pile, Brett counters with a weirwood tree, uh, Rich puts down a second corpse pile, and then Brett's puts down a stake. Now, the stake is uh, very popular with Targaryens because you can use it as a defensive piece to hide your units behind. Uh, for example, he might use his Outriders behind this, um, but because of Unstoppable Advance, they can still um, go right over it and not really face the penalties. So, <clears throat> Terrain is down, and we'll take a more, you know, close-up look once the game actually gets started, but I think for the top-down view, uh, might be fine just uh, for deployment for now. So Dicing Opposite gets to choose side. The sides are pretty equidistant. I'm, I mean, symmetrical, I should say. They're pretty symmetrical. I imagine uh, Brett wants the side where he put down the stake. So Rich gets to choose, and I imagine Rich is going to give Brett choice of side. Rich wants to take advantage of the tempo turn, um, where he can go last and go first. In this case, going last, I imagine, would mean pushing his Knights of Castle Rock or his Blade Men deep into Brett's line, and then round three, starting off with a Tywin Bomb onto a key unit and just smashing them in the flank, uh, playing a Hear Me Roar to just blow them up uh, in one go. So I think that will be the play against either the veterans, who are very squishy, or possibly Drogo. But if you take out either of those pieces, uh, you know, you're going to leave Brett very crippled. So um, Brett is starting off with Jora, his weakest piece, who is also the most flexible. Notice he deploys quite far back. Um, trying to remember here. No, Rich does not have any shooting at all, right? So, but he's just, you know, deploying a little bit far back to be safe, which is good. Uh, we kind of looked over lists. Yeah, I did talk about them. Uh, I didn't include it in the YouTube video, though. I just started recording when they started playing. Um, but yeah, you know, we had uh, Grey Worm and, and Drogo. I actually thought Brett might go Grey Worm because he had the extra activation and he wouldn't suffer from the uh, the Roos Tywin Bomb. But he's chosen to go with Drogo. Drogo is more fun, I'd say. You know, the mobility and the punchiness is really fun. Uh, in return, Rich throws down the Poor Fellows, which is his biggest unit. 
but in a way a very key unit because of the uh, tokens. Uh, this unit here is Outriders. Okay, and so predictably he's going to be using the stakes as defense, it seems like, for the Outriders. You just hide behind it and shoot all day, but Rich is deployed also very far back to make sure he won't eat unnecessary shots. Now, I, I typically say this, you know, a lot of Targaryens, especially Drogo and Mother Dragons, don't really play scenario and just put pressure on your opponent. So I wonder if the scenario will play a role at all, or will Brett get so aggressive um, that it will force Endline to, you know, turtle up and be more defensive, and it's going to be more of a fight. Uh, and we saw that kind of happen yesterday with Mitch and um, Jonathan. Was it yesterday or was it the day before? I think it was Friday, sorry, it was Friday night. And uh, what happened was in the beginning, they played super aggressive, but then once things started dying and they could redeploy, the middle and end game, I'd say, became more about the actual scenario. Uh, all right, so here we got, oopsies. Well, it's gotta be Bruce. Okay, so hold on, this is not Bruce. This is Flademan. I can detach things? What? Uh, these are the Knights of Castle Rock, cool. And we've got the veterans coming down. <clears throat> Interesting that he puts veterans now uh, instead of his screamers. Again, I always feel like you should deploy your, your, your biggest teeth last. And veterans can be very deadly on the outside, you know, just swooping in to do their combo. By putting them into the middle, it does restrict your options a little bit. We see Roos go down, and it seems like Rich is saying, my flayed men are my most important piece. And, you know, it seems like Rich is going to put his flayed men in the right-hand side here, which means he's got a very kind of symmetrical deployment. It makes you wonder if he does want to score points off the scenario. But will Brett let him? Or will Brett, in Drogo fashion, get hyper-aggressive into his face? Okay, so this unit here is the Screamers, okay. And yeah, I think at this point Drogo might just go down the flank. Um, and I've pl played Brett a lot as Drogo, and um, yeah, you know, Drogo can get easily tied up by Flademen without any real punch that is sundering or built in Vicious. The Flade, um, the Blood Riders tend to have a hard time actually cracking through um, uh, Flayed Men. And uh, Rich has Tycho for a, a heal should he need it. He can take the bags as well. You know, War, even with Warcry, it, it, you don't tend to do a lot of damage unless he feels a lot of panic. And <laughs> Rich did throw down a lot of course piles. So where the Drogo Flayed Men combat happens will be very important. Okay, so I predict, you know, with the base in the gap, and it doesn't make sense to put Flayman here. Uh, yep, pretty, pretty predictable deployment here, and then we'll see what the Blood Riders go. Do they go central to have options? Or, ooh, he is going central. Very interesting. Okay, cool. Gives him lots of options as to who he can kill, and he does have a few targets for Expert Duelist, uh, being Roos and, um, and the Champion of the Faith. The Roos kill is important because it does take three points off for table quarter scoring. <clears throat> and we'll see if one of the knight units can be used to, to intercept. Now, I do like this positioning on Brett's part, now that I think about it, because if the flayed men tie up Blood Riders, it gives Screamers an option to come into the flank and support. So I've had cases where Blood Riders have fought flayed men one-on-one -on -one and just been tied up, but with Screamer support, they can break through. So I imagine what Rich is going to try and do is set up a devastating Tywin Bomb charge of Knights of Castle Rock onto the Dothraki Outriders. I don't think he's trying to kill Drogo with the Tywin Bomb. I think it's way more reliable to kill uh, veterans. So I predict um, Rich will go first. He'll probably go into a very defensive posture. Uh, he'll just try and ride out round two, and then at the end of round two, he'll probably march 15 inches deep with the uh, with the uh, Knights of Castle Rock, 
and set up a Tywin Bomb onto the veterans and do a charge. Now, interestingly, I forgot about... Oh, does he have... He does have uh, Tycho. So, interestingly, Tycho can undo the damage of um, Tywin as long as Brett remembers to um, trigger it at the same time um, as um, he thinks when Rich will trigger it. And to be fair, I guess Rich has to trigger Tywin first, and then he can react by saying, okay, well, I'm going to also use Tycho once Tywin has resolved. So... Cards have been dealt, and it looks like Rich is going first. Okay, so we have three NCUs. Probably going to throw down... The order doesn't really actually matter. It does matter. You want to throw Pysel last, probably, so that you can't remove that weakened token. So Tiger goes down, we see cards being drawn, and... What token do you use? Probably Vulnerable. Oh, he's doing Weakened. Okay, cool. Kind of makes sense with uh, with Jora to uh, get rerolls. You want to use Weakened to kind of cancel out those rerolls a little bit. We see Alana Space's debts go down to the Knight's Castle Rock. This makes sense. He's under the least threat here, probably. Uh, Flayed Man will face a lot more um, damage. So, uh, with the activation of Barry, Whispered Threats goes down, and if I was Brett, I would just... Okay, so, interesting here. He's still going for it to remove the weakened, but he's going to take a Vulnerable and a Panic in return. And he's throwing Barry onto Jora. So I wonder... Why Jora? I mean, it does mean you can't Tywin him round one, I suppose. That would also kind of suck for Brett. If Tywin was used just to kill Jora, it would put him an activation down right away and a point down. The nice thing, though, is that in this scenario, and this is the, the hard thing to wrap your head around, is that units come back. So yes, you can get a free once-per-game kill with Tywin, but Jorah actually comes back. To, to haunt you as or okay so where will um rich put down his double token i think i think bread made the right play you you really cannot stop the rain of tokens going down was this hold on here did he forget it looks like rich forgot to put down the tokens and he's going to weaken the outrider or the veterans again yeah it looks like rich forgot to put down a token Two tokens, I should say. That's a pretty big mistake. These are very key tokens as well for pushing through damage. Okay, we're doing a crown zap, probably onto Jora, who passes without a problem. Everything else is morale five, and Jora's morale four, but if he fails, you can actually kill him. So it'd be horrible to get a free kill. Now, interestingly, I guess he couldn't put the token on. Barry would have blocked it, I suppose. I was going to say maybe he could have put a panic on Jora, but I guess Barry could have stopped that from happening. All right, so um, because of assault orders, you know, Brett may not throw down Tycho right away. So it's, it's kind of like the old uh, sudden charge from the Starks. You know, when your opponent does not throw down an NCU, it makes you wonder why. <laughs> so there are some cool mind games going on right now. Um, so we saw two cards, going to saw Whispered Threats, and we saw Last Space Steps. Right, okay, cool. So Jorah has kind of committed himself. Um, it's a bit close to Knights, I'd say. Knights could just kill him, but I guess, obviously, you know, after you do that, you're going to get wrecked by, you know, veterans, outriders, and maybe bloodriders. And this could be a far charge, so... I, I predict Rich will just activate and maybe scooch to the bottom right to avoid any super aggression from Brett round one. Those stakes are illegal. Oh, good call. Good call. Uh, terrain's got to be six. Yes, these stakes are illegal. These are Brett stakes. Yes. And you know what, I think it's only this scenario and Fire and Blood where you can't do that, right? So, yeah, that is, a, that is a mistake, unfortunately. Okay, so we see Unstoppable Advance being used to destroy the stakes, most likely. So I guess, easy come, easy go. <laughs> they're maybe, maybe they're catching their mistake and they're going to destroy those stakes. 
and we see a what is this counterplot counterplot this early to destroy the states uh it's i wait i have a hard time believing he's counterplotting stakes Did he counterplot Unstoppable Advance? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why would Rich do that? Surely there are some way more important cards like Assault Orders you want to counterplot. I think he counterplotted Unstoppable Advance. Now, I mean, it kind it doesn't even really keep this unit behind the stakes, right? I mean, it looks like it is, but I'm pretty sure Brett... I mean, okay, so maybe this is some big five-headed play here. What would Brett have done? If he had destroyed the stakes, he could just be a little bit more far forward. I think it's pretty clear that Brett could have maneuvered here and then marched past Jorah, but that obviously puts him in a very vulnerable position. So what would Brett have done with Unstoppable Vance? Would he have just destroyed the stakes and sat next to Jorah in shooting range, perhaps? But that still seems insane. Counterplot is way too valuable of a card. I'm going to definitely have to ask Rich about that. Why would you counterplot an Unstoppable Vance? So, um... Rich puts Tywin on the swords. This is a little bit scary because it now means that a deep, deep, deep march with Drogo, and it looks like it looks like he's going in. A deep march with Drogo could result in a um, assault orders charge into something. So we'll see how far he's going to move. Now Brett is also first round two. Is Brett going to go balls deep into? the lines of the Lannisters here. And if he goes 12 straight forward, he will have the option to assault orders. Okay, well, he can't go deep into the middle because both knights have not activated yet. So he might be going super deep into... Well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean... He is an easy charge range of the Knights of Casterly Rock. So, yes, you can Assault Orders them and get an, a round of attacks on. But it won't do a lot, especially if they take the left-hand side. I don't know. I guess it might do some damage. You can pop Jorah's Order also for rerolls, And you can also Warcry, of course. Yeah, this is very aggressive positioning. I feel like Rich is obligated to charge in with the Knights now. But Brett knows this, right? So this really, really implies this is Assault Orders. <clears throat> That's true, Abyskius. And it's interesting that he didn't actually break them. Right? He could have just moved up and broken them, and he didn't break them. It would have been 2d3 plus 2. Um, true. It does keep him back. Yeah, it's interesting that he didn't break it with his actual action. Okay, so we see, oh, okay, two dice being thrown. This is, oh, this is Rich's own war cry. And yeah, I, I think he forgot his whispered threats from earlier. But you can already see, without Whispered Threats, he still has three tokens down. So a Flayman Has No Secrets is going to um, have no problem having a token to be used. So yeah, I feel like I feel like Rich is obligated at this point to charge Drogo. Now, it's interesting that they're checking Jorah. It could be that Rich is considering charging Jorah just to kill that activation. We know it's, yeah, it's auto-win into Drogo. He probably cannot get into the flank. So this is not terrible for Brett, I'd say, unless he takes crippling damage here. 
um, because his assault orders can get rerolls and precision, and he is first next for more free attacks from the sword. So I am curious how Rich plays this out. He has a charge now, or else he will lose this champion of the faith, which is a big source of, you know, the tokens. Ooh, wow, is he backing up? So this is very patient. Wow, he's backing up. He's accepting the Assault Order's charge, which shouldn't kill this unit. But if Rich, sorry, if Brett goes first round two, he very well could kill this unit. Very patient on, on Rich. I don't know how I feel about it. It might play out in his favor. Um, so Jorah's also probably outside of 12. Uh, Jorah's also probably outside of 12 of the poor fellows. So yeah, I guess Rich is just accepting their death. If there is a assault order, of course. Like, why would you not just counterplot the assault orders? Why would you counterplot Unstoppable Advance? Okay, if there's a second Unstoppable Advance going down, this is really great for Brett to be able to pull out both of these more or less crappy cards out of his uh, early hand. Okay, so wow, these veterans are going to blow it up instead. And he's really focusing a lot of his power now onto the left-hand side. Uh, this is going to be kind of messy to break through this. No, I guess not. 12 is here. He should be fine. Very interesting. That is also true, Biscius. Yeah, that is very true. If the knights had charged in, Assault Orders could shift Drogo to one side, and then the veterans could have done a whole combo. So yeah, I think, you know what, in hindsight, that actually makes a lot of sense. He was going to eat so much damage, not enough, and, you know, um, Brett's going first next round. So you're, you're, you're right, you're right. I didn't think about the veterans, Ibiscus, that's a very good point. He would eat a lot of damage. So he's just accepting a minor setback here with the, you know, unit getting attacked here. This unit may die round two if Rich doesn't pop. I mean, it'll probably die, I should say, if he doesn't pop the Taiko. And he shouldn't use the Taiko heal on this unit. It's too valuable on poor fellows. Hmm. So it sounds, it feels to me like Rich is going to be on the back foot a little bit. But Drogal will be extremely far forward, so we will see. Now, it's also possible... He shuts down Drogo, but I don't think so. I don't think this is the moment you want to throw down your, your Tywin. Okay, so, um, interesting that, okay, the veterans moved, and now Rich is not backing up with the poor fellows. Like, he could have probably prevented a Salt Order's charge by moving back with these poor fellows. It does kind of expose Roos, but Roos might have been a far-ish charge. Interesting, I didn't even think that after he backed up the knights, I didn't even think that Drogo didn't go in right away. He instead used the veterans, and the assault orders did not get played. These poor fellows, maybe he doesn't have it. Maybe this is just posturing, and he doesn't actually have assault orders. He's played two unstoppable advances. You know, can that third card be assault orders? So Flamen just kind of move up to be... Uh, supporting against the oncoming Screamers. He didn't want to go too deep in the middle to avoid getting hard flanked. And um, with 18 inches of movement, you know, he's just moving and uh, going where he wants to, essentially. So very interesting. Uh, Brett has, has, has really uh, kind of amalgamated all his forces on the left flank here. He had a very wide deployment, and in typical Targaryen faction, is redeployed off onto the left. And we have the last activation from from um, Rich, which is the poor fellows, he's probably going to pull back down to the right. Uh, and I think that means that that was not Assault Orders. Right? He would have charged by now, right? Because he's not really going to, going to get countered. So... I guess if Drogo had charged first, Rich would have also had the opportunity to use a token to heal. So it looks like they're eight away. Five inches back means he should be out of range. If he moves five back, he should be 13 away. And Drogo cannot charge. Okay, that was exciting. <laughs> I really thought we'd see a lot of blood round one. Uh, but it sounds like it was a bit of a bluff. But you know what? I really like Brett's position. 
Brett's got all his forces right in Rich's face. He can do a lot of combos here. He's got his defensive pieces supporting in the back. So this is a really good positioning on Brett's part. And we'll see how Rich reacts. I'm really I'm really glad Hibiski has brought that point up. If you charged in, you might eat... So the risk is if that was Assault Orders, he would have eaten a lot of damage. So he's just playing it safe. Yes, definitely a total strategy happening here, Mikel. Yes. It's true, but you know what? For the most part, it looks like um, Brett has largely cleared most of the corpse piles. And his key units, I'd say, being the Outriders and the and the, and the Boat Riders, are passed. And you know what? Honestly, like, there is there is some utility in that card against bogs and corpse piles and stuff. But, you know, most of the problem is gone, and it's good just to cycle that card out. Okay, so poor fellows are repositioning at a very interesting angle. I thought he was just going to pull back, but it looks like he is kind of exposing his flank, to be honest with you. But I guess he's trusting they're not going to die to one attack. Now, the veterans are weakened, and there is no Khaleesi to remove extra tokens, so... Is he going for a charge? Oh, I think he's going for a charge, just to get some extra damage in. This is 9, he's a 4. And he fails. I wonder why he would go for a charge. That seems kind of crazy. Now, I think Rich is accepting that this unit was going to get attacked anyway. So I guess, you know, you might as well charge and do some free damage before Drogo charges you. Like, he's accepted that they're going to get charged, right? And honestly, getting flanked is not a big difference to the poor fellows who only have 6 plus armor anyway. Um, and, you know, I've often heard Rich tell me, you know, if you fail your charge, no big deal, you just make a faith token, right? So it's not a terrible position, and it does create some interesting, like, setup, because if Drogo or the Varen's charge in, it does expose their flank to the knights down here. So I can kind of see why this works. You know, you don't really lose a lot. This position is actually not that bad for poor fellows, um, and you could have gotten some free, some free damage in. So round one is over. Uh, round two goes off. Oh, Assault Orders is being played. It is Assault Orders. <laughs> okay, this is... Wow, it was Assault Orders. Craziness. And this is really good for Brett, because it means that this unit cannot use their token to heal in between attacks. Wow, I wonder if Rich is kicking himself for counterplotting Unstoppable Advance now. This is... Wow, what a, like, what a crazy hand Brett had. Okay, this is the kill on the Champion of the Faith, I imagine. He's dead. Again, I don't think Rich cares. He expected him to die one way or the other next round. Um, and we've got seven attacks hitting on threes. Um, so far, six. Six hits. Six hits saving on sixes. We expect six kills. Uh, we got oh we got the draw order going off, so we actually have two precisions. I wonder why he's oh he's um, removing a model to replace the champion of faith. I guess there we go. Uh, we do expect all these to die, the other four to die due to the vulnerable token, which I'm sure Brett will use. Yeah, yeah, losing that to losing the champion is quite significant. So um, it looks like he did not use the vulnerable because he wants to use the vulnerable on the free swords and still have war cry to throw down on something else. So they pass their panic, I believe. Their leadership four panic token being used into a pass. Okay. Okay, so they are likely to die from swords, and that is a big deal because the rich will be an activation down. He'll be an activation down at the start. I don't know if you pop Tycho here just to save an activation. But you know what? I wonder. I wonder if you do pop Tycho. Because this unit, Drogo's Blood Riders, is very exposed. Right? 
you like I mentioned earlier before the stream started, Rich can pop Tycho. Sorry, not pop Tycho. He can pop Tywin. Use the hits and the panic tokens. Uh, use the hits and the panic test with these existing tokens, and then reapply them with Reigns of Castamere into a flank charge from the knights. Now, the problem is eight attacks, or I should, I should say eight hits, if you roll perfect, brings Drogo down to four wounds if he fails all his saves. And that's a kind of a big if. I mean, yes, it's fives with a vulnerable token, but he might pass one or two. I don't think you one-shot... Oh, but then there's the hits. Yeah, the other problem, too, is the hits on this unit is not that good because it's a 3-plus with the Vumble token. You expect maybe two wounds. Maybe two wounds. Oh, the Tyco did get popped. So Rich does feel it's important to hold the line here with, with the poor fellows. And um, we're going to see Barry go down. So Barry... Oh, was that an intrigue? Was that an intrigue? It was an intrigue. Huge. So no Barry block this round. No Barry block? means no way oh okay i was gonna say that well no berry block okay into but tywin was not popped i don't think Tywin was not popped do you need to pop tywin now i guess not right there's no reason to pop tywin because they weren't going to heal off the attack anyway pretty good roll from brett all hits seven hits into one save loses six they cannot die, which is the important part. Is he rerolling the six? This is the six from the four. Yep, he's rerolling the six, so he loses seven now. They could die with a crit fail panic. They could die with a crit fail panic. And I wonder, he's got two cards in hand. I wonder if he's got a hear me roar or something to try and push through the damage into Drogo. Uh, they do fail panic, but only lose one wound. That was a big deal. Big, big deal. Big, big deal. Okay. Is it Tywin bomb time, people? Is it Tywin bomb time? Is it Tywin bomb time? I think it's not a double kill. I think it's just a kill on Drogo if he pops the Tywin. So I think this is a big think. And it's really based on what card he has here. If he has Hear Me Roar, he might be able to do the Killing Blow onto Drogo this round before Drogo activates, no less. Oh, he's going onto the board. I think he's not going for it then. He's going for a heal. Interesting. Okay, so he's not going for the Tywin Bomb. He is denying removal of tokens, though, and he's going to weaken the second attack from Drogo. And the nice thing is that one Assault Orders is gone, and the game is pretty young. He used Assault Orders on Poor Fellows, which will respawn. So, you know, you are kind of riding out the worst of Drogo's tactics cards here. Interesting. So he doesn't feel confident with the attack yet. I wonder if he's going to be able to take the envelope and draw some more cards into Hear Me Roar. Okay, so in response, we see Outriders, and he's trying to see if a free attack, if a shot can get into this flank. It could kill these poor fellows with the Jor Order, but I think he was just barely out. I wonder if uh, Brett plays defensive and uh, takes the envelope to prevent Rich from drawing into a powerful card. A horse could be neat as well to retreat Drogo into a safe position from those knights. Okay, so he's going for the envelope. He should weaken these knights, which he is. That's definitely going to prevent Drogo from being exploded, barring some super hot dice from Rich. And he's drawing into two more cards. So I think he's gone through his first three, drawn two, so he's gone through at least five. Oh, wait, he's gone through way more. What the heck? Oh, he's been cycling Audrobot as well. Okay. Wow, Brett has done some hard cycling top of two, more or less, and he's seen nine of his 20 cards already. Pretty cool. <clears throat> we got a bribery going down. This card is huge to put down onto veterans. Their seven attacks goes down to four, really limits their explosive potential. So that was his Tycho onto the crown, replacing the fairly weak crown zone with uh, bribery, which is great, and they're weakened. So they're not going to do much this... Um, this round for sure. <laughs> the trick is now to not attack them, to keep the bribery on, so that they don't do a lot of damage. And 
what does Brett do now? So it is pretty scary for, you know, I got to say that because of this scenario, it makes the Tywin bomb less effective because units respond. So I wonder, I wonder if they start looking at table quarters. <laughs> Honestly, this last zone may not be used as the horse at all. I don't think anything is in a key position that needs to have the horse. And Tywin can literally be just dropped into this quarter to clean that table quarter. Tywin, yep, poor fellows and knights could kill Jorah and Drogo, possibly. Yep. Yeah, with that weaken token, it really kind of seals the deal. But he could charge now. Oh, you know what he could also do? He could charge the knights in. As much as I think this would also be a good play to put Tywin into a quarter, he could charge the knights in, do whatever damage he can, and then retreat off the horse to set up the Tywin bomb round three. That could be a thing. So Jorah is doing a ride by attack, it looks like. That is a very interesting position because you're just going to get killed by flayed men or knights. You're dealing two wounds. Uh, hmm. You're dealing two wounds to lose a point. I mean, I expect these poor fellows to die anyway. Right? Even Drogo with a weakened token is going to kill one, and you got to kill four. Pretty good odds to kill four, and if you don't kill four, you can probably kill them off with the Screamers, or with a shot from the Outriders, or a shot from the Veterans. So I don't know why he needs to expose Jorah to deal two wounds. It would power up Blood of the Dragon, but it's not on the table yet. Now he's doing some very interesting pivoting here. He's making sure he's not in going to get seen by the Guardsmen, which is fine. But he's still going to get destroyed by knights or flayed men. So I don't think he likes it, and he's 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 teleporting back to rethink. Take horse, let Roost. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, he could have just taken the horse and charged uh, with Roos. I don't know if Roos would actually kill him, despite being Roos. The attacks from the <laughs> guardsmen are not that spectacular. Looks like he's charging blood riders. Maybe. Oh, I see from the front here. I gotcha, 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 gotcha. Hey, how's it going, Van Van? You're right. That could have been used to stop an attack from the uh, Palladian. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay, so... Screamers are backing up, I think, into a flank charge. Yes, that's pretty safe positioning. It's going to also free up Drogo, which is pretty key, and it'll also avoid the uh, corpse pile hindering, which is really key as well. So I think he's maneuvering into their flank, into a charge. And seven attacks should kill them. I wonder if uh, maybe Endland should have activated them a bit earlier before putting Bribery down to heal them with a Faith Token. And with seven wounds, they probably wouldn't have died from anything due to the weakened tokens, barring a failed panic test, of course. Okay, we see a card being thrown down. Fire and blood. So vicious, I guess, probably. Probably vicious. So it's going to be minus three, testing on seven. And that's what you need. You do need some panic damage to go through. Uh, I don't see Jorah's order being used. I guess you don't need it. You'd rather save Jorah's order for Drogo or veterans or something else. Okay, so seven attacks on threes, rerolls going both ways. Probably vicious from Fire and Blood. Uh, decent roll to start. Pretty good roll to start. Okay, so, oh no, only five hits. There's five guys with the weakened token. He needs all of these to hit. Oh, brutal, only one hit. One hit means even a crit panic fail will not kill this unit. Oh my gosh, these are some hero 
hero. Actually, it's not so much these guys are the heroes. It's these guys were incompetent. These screamers were incompetent. Okay, so panic at minus... Even with a minus two, it's a pass. Even with a minus three, I should say, it's a pass. Flank and um, presumably vicious from the... From the uh, that is huge. They just ate a flank charge and took a single wound. That is huge. <laughs> Can't even kill poor fellows. Targ confirmed not OP. True. Targ trashed here now, right? <laughs> Screamers are trashed here. That was pretty big. So you know what? I think I think you activate poor fellows now. Pop a token. Heal the six. And you're really unlikely to... Oh, my God. I forgot. They're down to four, right? He actually got a maximum heal out of that. The maximum heal is not big, though, I think. Yeah, you only heal three. Okay. That is hilarious. So now there are seven guys. Uh, I wonder who he fights. I wonder who he fights. Um, you probably go for Drogo. You pop a token, you attack Drogo, swing for the fences with uh, with uh, with precision, and with all these tokens, if Brett has not Brett, if Rich has a flame and has no secrets, he can totally cancel a uh, Tycho. Oh man! Okay, four attacks hitting on fives. He's keeping the same facing, which is interesting. It doesn't matter a lot on poor fellows because of their great morale. He already has a precision and two hits. He's not getting greedy. Oh my god! Three hits. Okay. He should not use the vulnerable. <laughs> he should save it for the night charge. Oh my gosh. Poor fellows. These guys are the hero hobos of Westeros. And he's taken two, two free wounds from poor fellows. Panic at even. Sorry, panic at plus one because of iron resolve is fine. That is... Hilarious. Oh, he went for the Screamers. Oh. You know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. I was going for Drogo because of just the hilarity of it. But in fact, it's bad to go on Drogo because Drogo would just heal that damage back up. And now you've done four wounds to Screamers. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Drogo would just heal, right? So there's no point. Unless you Tywin Bomb. But I guess you're saving the Tywin Bomb for round three. Okay, so I think these veterans have to be used now to block Drogo's flank. Otherwise, a charge into a retreat, into a round three charge, is going to kill Drogo. But Drogo will come back, should he die, because of the scenario. Hobo power. Uh, they've been bribery though, Batman. So only four attacks. And there's a beacon token. So yeah, the vets are good, but in their current state, they're a little weak. Bribery on the vets. Hmm. Is that Adrobot? Mm-hmm. So I believe Audrobot was used for a cycle. It's used after Drogo activates. So Brett is now down to 10 cards. Half his deck through by the uh, top of three. What will the vets do? It looks like the vets are abandoning Drogo. They're doing a ride by attack. I will have to give Brett credit for really <clears throat> getting a lot of value of cards that I have trouble getting value out of. This card for me is tough. But this position puts them in danger range of Flademan. Now, they do have Swift Retreat, so Flademan can charge, do a bunch of damage, and they can get away. But I feel like this is kind of unnecessary exposure to deal two measly wounds. I guess what he's trying to do is whittle this unit down to make sure that Drogo can break free. Drogo might have an overrun, right? In fact, after that, you know, very aggressive card churn, he probably has an overrun by now. So killing this unit is probably a huge deal. Which is why the knights... Okay, once... In fact, once these... 
veterans get out of the way, I think the knights are kind of free to charge Drogo in the flank. And that will prevent Overham from being a thing. If you charge in the flank, you might expose yourself to some shots, but with a 3 plus save, you should be okay. He's blocking the screamers. True, but he's exposing his own, like, he's exposing the veterans. You're blocking the screamers, who might, who might have died. You're right. But you know what? The screamers are probably pretty safe, I would argue, because it's a bit of a distance, plus there's a corpse pile blunting the damage. <clears throat> Whereas if Flademan can <clears throat> peel a rank off with the vicious panic test onto the outriders, onto the veterans, it really, you know... You don't even need the bribery at that point. The bribery would be unnecessary. On their last rank, they just do not cause that much damage to those veterans. Okay, so he's... I think he's still going for the ride-by attack. He's just trying to be very careful with his measurement here. That is true. The vets will not die to uh, Um but it will be a negative three panic test, so they are unlikely to pass that panic. Probably negative three. Oh, this is probably... that is enough. Yeah, that's enough. He will eat a front charge. Okay. Ride by attack. Played. Yeah, okay. So now I think the knights go in. If you're worried about Drogo overrunning into Roos, let's say, this is the time to charge the knights in Rich. And yeah, it's scary because once, once Drogo's activated, you can retreat the knights and go in with the Tywin Bomb. Uh, that's the bribery. And Rich is still have one card in hand. This might be the card he originally kept. I think he's at 15. He played two cards. Oh, he did use his whole hand. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so <laughs> based on Rich's blue hand motion, I think the knights are going in. So it's auto win into the flank. The two hits means that Rich really can't do too badly. Even the bad roll, he should get at least four or five hits in. And four or five hits into the flank with a vulnerable token is a lot. And then once he recharges with the horse and Tywin Bomb, that will be a dead Drogo. But Drogo will be back. I'll be back. This looks fairly good for Brett. I don't know. I don't know if you uh, were watching the entire time, Mickey. He, he got an assault orders off onto this unit. He flanked with Screamers, did one wound, and then Rich healed three. Like, I feel like he's bogged up. I don't know. I feel like this is actually bad. But we'll see. It's still early. Nothing decisive yet. The only decisive thing I'd say was that the Screamers didn't pop this unit. One wound with a flank charge. <clears throat> Pretty unlucky. The weakened token was huge. Pycel paying dividends there. It's funny because Pycel literally is like wounds healed at that point on poor fellows. Every miss is essentially a wound that you get to you get to heal back. Okay, so it looks like Rich is actually charging with the flayed men, which I find very interesting because he's not worried about Drogo overrunning, or he's not considering it. Or maybe he has a Flayman has no secrets, which is a guaranteed counterplot against that card. 
But still, I feel like even if you can Flavin has no secrets the overrun, you want to keep him in your flank so that the knights can do a devastating charge. Flavin coming in. Uh not fantastic. Uh five hits. Five hits. Saving on fives. No rerolls due to hindering. Decent roll, one down, and now the big question is, will they pass their panic? Uh, minus three, due to Vicious, and they fail. They barely fail, so the panic stays on. They take additional two wounds <clears throat> due to Intimidating Presence. Oh, was that a mistake? Didn't he fail three and then take two? Was there a Hear Me Roar that got played? Oh, it was Hear Me Roar. That was Hear Me Roar, I believe. He played a card? And it's gone? Yeah, it was Hear Me Roar. Okay. So he cannot stop an overrun. I feel like that was a mistake from Rich. He cannot play overrun. Okay. So now, Drogo's going in. Drogo's going in. It's all about the weakened token. Okay, so five hits. He needs to kill. Rerolls due to Jorah equals seven hits. I'm assuming this is Jorah's order. And then the weakened token is going to kill them all. <clears throat> With a vulnerable token, those guys should be dead. And we should see an overrun into Roos. Now, funnily enough, if you overrun into Roos, you do expose your rear. And maybe that's why Rich didn't care. He's like, sure, charge my commander. Kill my commander. Give up your rear. With a vulnerable and a panic token. Okay, so we see the poor fellows get killed, and do we see an overrun? Probably won't use the... Yeah. Um... Do we see an overrun? So based on this, it looks like it's probably 7 or 8. Looks like it's more than 8. <laughs> Definitely feels like an overrun. So Drogo, oh, options. This is into the Flame Men. Uh, this is nine, so it's a three plus. Uh, that would be really strong. That'd be really strong. If I was Brett, I would probably gamble on the three plus charge into the Flame Men. Because it will take you away from the knights, who I really feel should have charged. I wonder why Rich didn't pull the trigger there. Was he thinking... Okay, here's what Rich may have been thinking. He may have been thinking that if you charge the knights in, you do a bunch of damage. But Drogo will probably bring all those wounds back when he kills the poor fellows. Maybe that's what Rich is thinking. Now, I'm assuming as well that Jorah popped his order. And I would that's a fair bet because there's nothing else that's really going to benefit from the order. <clears throat> oh, no overrun. No overrun. He didn't... And you know what? That is fair. Overrun would have been bad to the flank. You kill Roos probably, but then you expose your rear. But you're still exposing your flank with your current pivot. I think you're still exposing your flank with the current pivot. And interestingly, he's actually going to eat a charge from Roos now, which would put Intimidating Presence into contact with Drogo. I wonder if he didn't get Overrun in his first 10 cards. And I wonder, again, is Overrun even the right call? I don't know if it is. It does put Drogo in a very bad position, where he can still get rear charged, retreat with the horse, into another rear charge with the Tywin. Very interesting. Okay, so it looks like he's happy with Drogo's positioning. I'm pretty sure the knights get a flank, and I'm pretty sure Roos gets a front. <clears throat> Jeremy War would have been huge onto Drogo as well on the Tywin turn to make sure to quote unquote make sure you kill him. But he's just oh you know what though Rich is probably digging for he played the Hear Me Roar probably 
because he wants to dig three more cards deep to get to Flame and Has No Secrets. Yeah, so that makes sense in hindsight. You know, it, you want to make sure you use it to keep the bribery on, and you want to um, cycle through to get a Flame and Has No Secrets. Flame and Has No Secrets is really big to stop the Tycho heal. And once you get nine cards deep... Oh, he's popping it now! Very smart on Brett, I'd say. Brett is using the Tycho heal now. Even though you could argue it's not necessarily optimal, it's still good. Healing up eight wound veterans is still very good. And you know you're going to get it before he draws a flame and has no secrets. So this is smart play on Brett. You want to save it for Drogo, of course, but you may not get it next turn once Brett cycles through three more cards. <clears throat> so Brett's at one. Okay, now <laughs> it's actually time to start counting table quarters. So flame are in this quarter. Roos is in this quarter. Um, it looks like it's going to be... 2-2. Two, two. Actually, Jorah and the Screamers can both redeploy to the right. So it might be 3-1 for Brett when it comes to quarters. Okay, so I think at this point you charge in Roos and then you charge in the Knights. You charge in Roos for the Intimidating Presence for one the Knights charge in. Oh, the question is, do you charge in Roos because you're throwing him into Drogo? I think the answer is yes, because we're planning on the whole flank into a retreat into a charge, round three. Um, you probably save space, just in case you don't want the flank, as crazy as, as it may sound. If you flank, Jorah or the Scream or the Outriders might tie up your knights. You actually may want to go for the front to make sure that they can't tie you up. <clears throat> and prevent a retreat. Though, could they really prevent a retreat? If you retreat, you can still retreat this way. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe you do go on the flank no matter what. Okay, so six attacks from these piddly guardsmen. Probably not going to use any tokens here. Save the tokens for the big knight charge coming up. No, so rolling for the charge first is a one. No big deal. Kind of irrelevant. He can't maintain holding the back quarter. I think this unit here... Ooh, good call. Where are these veterans? I think these veterans are in this quarter. So I think the veterans are already in this quarter, and I think the Outriders and Jorah can redeploy. So it looks like no wounds were dealt. Unsurprising. It looks like maybe he had two hits and made both saves, which is fine. You're really just here for the Intimidating Presence for when the Knights go in. One or two wounds would have been nice, though, for sure. Now, I think there's a possibility that maybe Rich goes into Screamers to, like, guarantee a kill. You're not really certain about the kill on Drogo. But no, there's no way. you got to kill Drogo. Removing Drogo round three would be big. You're taking away a key activation. <clears throat> okay, so it's over to Brett. Brett only has these two units left, and we'll see what does he do. He could also, I was going to say he could also move Jorah into the flank to prevent a flank charge, but then you you also throw away Jorah. Jorah. Yeah, so let's carefully check here, as carefully as we can. Does a top-down view help? Uh, I guess a little bit. So I think this point, I believe it's slightly in this top left quarter here. And if it's on the line, Rich gets to choose, right? Rich would probably choose him to be in that top left quarter. So I believe right now, as it stands... Oh, where is Roos? Oh my god, is Roos on the line? How annoying would that be? Roos? That's pretty much as on the line as you get. Oopsies. So I think... I think Brett would get to choose there. Sorry, folks, I know I'm jumping around a lot. So, okay. Hmm. This unit is worth 11. This unit is worth not 11. It's worth uh, 8. So Brett would want... Mm, okay, I don't think there's a way to do it, right? If it's in this quarter, 
they each get a point. If it's in this quarter, only Rich gets a point. So I think I think if Brett has the choice, he would want Roos to be in this quarter here, so they each get a point. Okay, Outriders coming forward, and yeah, they're just gonna protect. They're just gonna protect Drogo's flank, exposing themselves. But I think that's the play because. If knights charge into the Outriders, you don't even really care. Drogo is still free to run around and shank Roos. I think. Oh, I wonder if I wonder if Brett is positioning to prevent a front charge too. I think. I don't think he was able to, but I don't know if he measured carefully. He could have been able to prevent a front charge and a flank charge with the right positioning. If he had gone over a little bit, if he could have, and maybe he couldn't, so I shouldn't be critical, but. If he had the movement, he could have blocked both, which would be horrible for Rich. Even now, it's close. He might be blocking both, but probably not. Well, I was thinking that what's going to happen, perhaps, Mickey, is he could charge the knights in the front do some damage. The weakened token pretty much guarantees he won't kill him. But he's got the horse open still. The horse can be used to retreat into a charge round three with Tywin uh, providing some extra hits as well. Yeah, the horse is still open, but I think it's Obiskius reminds me that Tywin can also be used to claim a quarter. Tywin can actually be used to claim this quarter down here. Um, that's... Oh man, this is a good game. Because either you claim a point with Tywin... Or you retreat with the knights to allow a more brutal charge, round three. Okay, so at this point, the knights should go in, and then and then Rich can decide what to do with Tywin after. He, oh, you don't need to do this now, I don't think. It's just draw a left, right? Like, why not see how much damage you deal, and decide if a retreat or claiming a quarter is more important. So I think he's asking which quarter do you want to put Roos in. And Brett pointed to this quarter here. But I don't think you need to do this now. I think... Oh, I don't think you need to do this now. I think you could charge the knight, see how much damage you deal, and then choose to retreat. Uh, we have some dice being thrown. Is this a war cry? From Brett? Oh, he's, is he popping Tywin? I don't think he's popping Tywin. I think that was a war cry. He might be popping Tywin, though. He might be going in now, which I think is wrong because of the weakened token on the knights. Hmm. I wonder what that dice roll is. It could be a panic... Sorry, it could be a panic test onto the Blood Riders because of um, Tywin Reigns of Castamere, or it could be a war cry. I, okay, it looks like it's a war cry. Whew. Oh, and we see some card play. Do we see another ride by attack? Man! Man, maximum value, I gotta say. <clears throat> maximum value. This is the second ride by attack, I think, right? Yeah, wow. Okay, cool. I never get value on my red by tax. Big respect to Brett for getting any value out of red by tax. Though to be fair, he's done it a lot with Jora, but still, I I, I almost never put, find myself in a position to get uh, good value out of that card. Um, I got to get better. I got to get good. I just like the grittiness and the zonal thing of this game. Yeah. I can see that. Depends how picky your players are. I would say I'm a pretty picky player, Van Van, and um, when I play this mode, I, I just put a dice in the center, and I find that that dice, for me, isn't good enough to tell me which quarter a unit is in, and if it matters that much, then we measure, but usually it doesn't matter, and it's usually pretty clear. <clears throat> 
So I've heard, I think, I think Mickey and Carl were saying that if you play this scenario, you have to do it like round one at a tournament where you can like tape off the quarters right away. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I feel like that's a bit much. I think, I think a dice in the middle is good enough nine out of 10 times. So just going for a clip onto the corner, I think 12 should be more than enough to get past. It's tight. It's actually a little bit tight. It's a little bit tight. I think with a pivot though, he should be able to clear that. Yeah, that's good. And he'll deal two wounds. And wow, Brett has played a lot of cards. He's cycled and played a lot of cards. I don't think he's discarded much and he's gone through half his deck, which is pretty great. So the 12 goes to here. I think, okay, now this is actually as good as it gets for Brett. If he cannot pivot clear from here, he can't use the card. Right, this is as good of a clip I think you can get pretty much on TTS. So I think if he can't pivot clear here, he can't use the card in this case. I think, oh, it's gonna be super, oh no, uh, he's not gonna be able to clear. Yeah, he's within an inch, barely, like 0.9, but he's too close. Okay, that's that's what I think. I, I don't know if, if Rich is going to give it to him or not. I don't think he should. <laughs> it's a pretty close game, and I think you should probably be tight and say you're not out of range. <clears throat> Fun fact, this particular map in real life is a split map anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> do you mean the official, um, Vamin, do you mean the official, uh, uh, battle mats that they produce? I think I've seen one. I think it is like two mats, right? Yeah, yeah, the official, that's true. <laughs> yeah, they, they knew in advance that that would come in handy. Yep. I just saw, actually posted, uh, on a couple of Facebook groups, this, um, battle mat, producer which produces a battle mat just for song and it's got like a built-in tactics board and a built-in like card discard and like turn tracker and victory point scorer it was really cool if i lived in europe i would for sure get a couple um i wonder what the shipping's like to, to canada but uh it's a pretty sweet mat <laughs> yeah i hear you i think it was a french company the default web store was in french for me but it looked look really nice. Like, I'm a sucker for, for these mats anyway. And um, I'm part of a gaming club now. And we're really pushing hard in the song. So it would be nice to have these cool mats. And if you ever run tournaments and stuff, it'd be nice to have these mats too. It's funny though. It, it, they're really like a luxury item. Because you don't need any of those things, right? Like the game comes with tactics boards and, and uh, you know, um, victory points and all that kind of stuff. But... Plus, we are near Singapore. Nick said, we are near Singapore. What does that mean? Does that mean shipping stuff? What does that mean exactly? Side note, I have traveled to Singapore before. It is great. It's a great country to visit. Um, living, I hear, is super expensive. But uh, as a tourist, it was pretty cool. Oh, you're in Indonesia, right? Sorry. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So it looks like Brett is still playing around with Jora. Looks like the ride by attack is no good. So he's considering what to do. And it looks like he's just going to tuck him into the middle. I don't know if they're counting quarters. I mean, he should be. You know, when, when Rich dropped down Tywin, it's a clear sign that one player is thinking about the mission, at least. Um, now, would Jorah's position have mattered? I guess not, right? There's nothing in this quarter, so it won't matter. I think the vets are in this quarter, so that's at least 1-1. One, one. Rich has this, so it looks like it's going to be 2-2 two, two for quarters. It looks like it's going to be 2-2. Two, two. So 2-2 two, two would bring the score to 3-2. Two. Okay. Okay, he's tucked Jorah away. Knights are charging in, probably to the front. I'm going to imagine that Brett probably couldn't have blocked the front and the flank at the same time. He's going into the Outriders. Interesting. He's just accepting... Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it... Now that I think about it... This makes a lot of sense because... After you kill Roos... The Blood Riders are actually very unhappy to be fighting Guardsmen. Right? This is a super tanky unit with a 3-plus save. Now, the morale's not so good. 
But with a 3 plus save, they're actually not going to eat a lot of damage in theory. But Tywin has also been popped. They might get ground down because of Warcry. So uh, Knights charge in. We got rerolls both ways happening. Ooh, I'm not sure what happened there. Oh, so I think two of them missed and rolled some weird way. Uh, so that is going to be five hits into a weaken. Should probably just change the target. Oh, he's hitting on twos because of uh, Lance Face's debts. So that is actually seven hits. Seven Lance hits into the Outriders. <clears throat> Very interesting. Uh, equals six save, so the tray is half dead. They're probably going to pass Panic with a plus one. Yep. And, uh, yeah, so I think what Rich is going to do here, he's accepted that Bruce is going to die, but he hopes this unit with a 3-plus save is going to just hopefully tie up the Blood Riders for a long time. Rich has learned that if you cannot deal a decisive blow to Blood Riders, just don't fight them. And without that horse into a retreat, into a recharge, you really can't kill the Blood Riders. So I think Rich is going to focus on the outer units and just leave Drogo to kill Roos. So the score is 3-2. Uh, yeah. Um, Brett has gone through 12 cards, which is awesome for the top of three. And Rich has done a full cycle as well. He's gone through three cards each round, which is pretty great. And the poor fellows come back. The poor fellows are back for some more war crying action, baby. Um, Tycho has also been popped by Brett, for anyone who's a bit late to the show, uh, which was smart playing Brett because he did it on a turn when Rich did not have a hand, so he knew that he could not get stopped by a Fleeman has no secrets. And he's putting himself in the top of the corner where currently there's nothing. And now this unit, I believe, will be a nightmare. This unit will not be easily killed by anything here. Um, and it's just going to be throwing out tokens, charging into flanks... We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yep, good call, Gamma. Good call. We took, uh, poor fellows in the top left. And Rich is first. I don't see a Tywin pop yet. Is there a reason to pop Tywin? Um, you know what you could do with Tywin? You could turn off the flayed men, or the veterans and prevent swift retreat. You could turn off the swift retreat off the veterans, which would be pretty significant. <clears throat> you can deal the hits to the Outriders. Oh, you know what? I wonder if you just... Oh, Jorah took a wound. That's kind of weird. Maybe you kill Jorah, take the swords of the knights. He... Doesn't have Illyrio, you get a heal, but then a second knight attack should probably kill them, especially with the war cry. Rich could kill two units this turn. He could probably kill Jorah and these Outriders this turn. And turn off the Outrider or the veterans to prevent swift retreat and any kind of explosive damage that they might do. Okay, I think we're seeing a war cry go down first, which is a pass. Yeah, no zones have been taken yet. I think if I was rich, I'd go for the double kill here. And as I mentioned, between Mitch and Jonathan's game, Airship Engineer's game, um, killing two units is really key in the scenario so that your opponent can't resurrect uh, one. He's got to pick one of the two. So Warcry goes down. <clears throat> I think Rich pops Tywin, takes the sword. He removed the panic token. I wonder why. Is he reconsidering where, where Warcry is going to go down? He can only choose two units. You want to throw it on the Outriders to try and kill them, I imagine. No card play. This is a very, very critical opening set of moves, I would say. I think now is the time you pop Tywin. Kill the activations before they activate. Okay, we got a Panic Test. I believe this is a Tywin. This is a pass into a reroll. He's fine with the damage. He's, I think he's going on to the Outriders here. Good first roll from Brett into a pass. That should be the panic. Cool. He's now going to deal the hits. Oh, you know what, though? 
he should throw the vulnerable token onto Jora. So he's reapplying panic with Tywin. So yeah, Reigns of Casimir is definitely going down. He should apply vulnerable to Jora, deal the hits to Jora, and that is very good odds to kill him. Yeah, so he's going for the double kill. Going for the double kill. And that's a good roll. This actually gives Jora a chance to live. He's he's got like a 50-50 chance on to live. 50-50 chance, dead. Oh, okay. This is gonna be a very decisive turn for tempo. Okay, so now he probably throws whoever. He should turn off the veterans. Looks like that's what's happened. Oh, he's turning off Drogo? I mean, that doesn't seem right to me. Because what are you turning off? You're turning off Warcry and Expert Duelist, essentially. Right? Like, you're not expecting them to take a lot of damage. I would have turned off the veterans personally for this fifth retreat. Okay, on to the swords. Pycelle is going down with a weakened token. You know what? Maybe... I don't know. We can make sense here to just make sure these guardsmen do their job of holding the line for as long as possible. And I guess... I guess... Yeah, I guess turning up Expert Duelist means they won't... They may not suffer the auto panic test. And we have the knights attacking four attacks with Sundering. That should deal four wounds. <clears throat> onto the Outriders. Sixes. Four fails. They're down to two wounds. I wonder if he's got a second Hear Me Roar to try and push through. He's got Vicious as well. No Vicious. Um, hold on. That was a pretty low roll. Rich right might use... Oh, are they dead? Is it because of Vicious? Does he have the crown? Wait, hold on. Didn't they pass? Isn't five a pass? Vicious is only with... Oh no, it's vicious all the time. I'm dumb. It's vicious all the time. So they did die. Huge. So with the free attack, he's already killed two units and really limited um, Brett's options here. Wow. Okay. So now it's seven activations versus five. Big turn. So I think Rich is just playing super safe. He's turning off the expert duelist to just try to have these guys live as long as possible. One less wound, plus with a weakened token, they may not take too much damage. Okay, what does Brett do? And you know what, to be honest, now that I think about it a little bit more, if Brett drew into his second assault orders, he could maybe pop through this unit with two attacks with failed panic tests and stuff. So this is actually very good defensive play, I think, in hindsight. You can give Swordsman Outriders instead of a flank on Drogo. Yep, and then with buff cards. Oh, that's a good point, too. That's a good point, too. <laughs> Mickey saying, nah, nah, now you go for the aggression, son. Now you go for the flank charge into Lancer Supremacy, into... And you know what? You also don't lose Roos. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more this makes sense. You will not lose Roos this round, either, which will help you control this quarter. Though, honestly, with how many points... Rich has on the table, he probably shouldn't have too much trouble controlling quarters compared to Brett. Okay, Brett is in a pickle now. Um, what does Brett do to react? Uh, bag is not super good. He may want to use the horse to retreat. He also has not yet drawn field control, or at least he hasn't played it. He could try and retreat Drogo to the flank here. <clears throat> Bruce can still charge him. Uh, does he want an envelope to draw more cards? Charging does not... I mean, actually, maybe you charge. Maybe you charge the knights now before they charge you. Right? You'd rather... Yeah, if you take a tactics board zone, unless it's the horse, you will definitely eat a charge to the face. Which... This unit has, what, eight wounds left? Guess who has eight attacks? These guys with the vicious test. Okay, uh, it looks like he is going to the board. I'm a little bit surprised. Maybe he takes the bag. Okay, yes. 
He's taking the bag to prevent the, the, the one shot on these uh, screamers, I imagine. And he's using... So in this matchup, I believe Barry is more of a defensive beast to prevent things like Hear Me Roars from going off. Oh, he's removing the bribery. Interesting. Oh, and Whispered Threat was played. So Whispered Threat was played to reapply some tokens. Interesting. Um, yeah, the really bad thing, I think, for Brett is because he's so heavily outactivated, the Flavin can wait until the end. Though Brett can also use Tycho onto the horse to retreat and try to set up the combo. However, the combo is gone because Jorah's dead. So you only have regular, non-precision, non-rerolling attacks to work with here. And next turn, he can only bring back one thing. He probably brings back the Outriders so that they can participate. They're worth more points to claim quarters. They can actually claim a quarter on their own. And they can also shoot via the, the, the swords. Okay, so I think if I was rich, you'd just smash into these out uh, these these screamers. I think you just smash into the screamers. I think you ignore Drogo at the end of the day. I think you ignore Drogo. You let him bang futilely on um, on on the guardsman, and you just cripple all his other teeth. Lots of zones open, for sure. Maybe he wants the envelope. But <clears throat> I feel like a charge now is pretty important. Before you lose the charge bonus on your knights. Now, the knights are pretty scary. I shouldn't say that. I was going to say they have plus one to hit, but they don't until they have the crown. Oh, okay, so Rich did go for more cards. He is throwing a token down on... I would probably throw on the veterans. Just make them weaken. You don't worry too much about the screamers. The veterans are the only real high impact unit. Oh, he's putting a panic. Ooh, that is scary. So the vicious with the panic token and a charge could be death. How does Brett react? Does he run away with the screamers? Does he take the horse? He doesn't take the crown, that's for sure. And that means that Rich will get the crown. Which, <clears throat> you know, while the weakest zone does power up all his cards, including a Lancer Base's debts. Oh, uh, that is Warcry, but he shouldn't be able to Warcry because of Tywin. I'm pretty sure that was a Warcry, but that should not be a Warcry. Oh, okay, so he's just running away with the Screamers being safe. I wonder if these... Oh boy, I wonder if these Knights can get into the Veteran... Oh, he's charging. Yeah, and with their movement, they can easily charge. Not a big deal. Okay. Ooh, interesting. Pretty good roll. Pretty good roll. <clears throat> okay, seven hits on threes. And I think they'll do a couple of wounds here. At least three or four wounds, probably. And I really like, I really like Screamers. You know, they're just missiles. Very efficient missiles. Oh, already, already four say, fails. Pretty brutal. Reroll. Already four fails. Reroll to the vulnerable. Okay, he's taking the wounds off now. He might save it for the veterans. No, he's making them roll now. Okay, all pass. So it, it kind of normalized out to average, I, I guess. Uh, panic at E... Oh no, minus one. Minus one because of the corpse piles. No trees nearby there. That is a big pass. Big pass. Okay. I wonder if these knights can get into the rear. And you know what? He might be able to get into the rear with Tywin anyway. Oh, he's in the rear. I think five for sure is in the rear. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Rear charge into panic with intending presence sounds pretty bad. I think that's the rear. I mean, Rich will guarantee it. <laughs> Rich will angle all he needs to to get on that line. 
but I think that's I think that's weird. Okay, that looks like weird to me. And the really bad news is he cannot flee. He cannot use Swift Retreat. Uh, I take that back. He can, if he rolls really high, pass the Screamers. And maybe you don't need to roll that high, right? This tray is what? He needs to get this point past this point. So is that 12? How long is a tray? Is a tray 4 inches and change? So let's say it's 4 inches and change. This is 8, 9. He needs to roll like a 3, I guess, maybe? Depends on how big the tray is. Okay, how much damage will this going to be? 6 attacks, hitting on 3s, no crown yet, right? Hitting on 3s, but with Vicious in the rear and Intimidating Presence. Uh, decent start <clears throat> into 8 hits in the rear. This could be a dead unit after the Flademen swing. This retreat is going to be humongous. Um, I would probably keep that. I would probably keep that. No, Rich! I guess... Okay, so I'd keep it because you have your Flademen attacking still. Uh, panic at minus a gajillion. A gajillion's a pass, but there's a vulnerable token due to whispered threats. That is a two? What the hell is that? What happened here? That's a three, I think. Okay, so we have to actually to count. It's minus four, minus five. <coughs> That's a pass. It's being reused. Uh, probably only rerolling the red dice. Minus five is now a fail, but barely a fail. Wow! into four wounds so he took he he took a lot of wounds he got one shot right wait did he get one shot he took eight didn't he take eight wounds into a oh this is a wait hold on this was a three this was a three that should be a one shot am i wrong okay Something funky happened there. I thought that was a three. It was weird, it was clouded, but I thought it was a three. And then when they reset the dice, I thought I saw a three. I think they should be dead. Now he's going for the uh, retreat. <clears throat> it's the only way he keeps him alive, otherwise Flitman will totally finish you. Oh, that's not enough. That is bad news bears. That's going to seal the fate of these veterans. And that's probably going to be game. He's going to be only bring back one unit. He's going to be heavily outactivated. And Rip can just tidy up with uh, with capturing quarters at this point. Wow. Uh, yep, we got five hits into the last wound. Can Brett roll like a god? And not like Buddha. Yep, those are dead vets. That's a point. Table quarter wise, um, Rich has two. So either Rich has. Actually, hold on here. If this unit, which is. Yeah, if this unit is here, it's going to be 3 0, or it's 3 1. So it's probably going to be 3 1. And that'll be probably too high of a lead for Brett catch up. Wow. Huge turn. Tywin Bomb did some serious damage, essentially killing two units into a rear charge one shot, more or less. And now it's just too little to come back up with. Okay, we see another cycle. <sighs> wow. What does Brett have left? Brett has Drogo and Tycho left. Veterans didn't even activate. He lost an activation. I think this is Drogo. Five hits with the weakened token becomes three hits. Rich should lose a guy or two here, but he's going to eat Supremacy in return as well. <clears throat> he's going to eat Supremacy. So he made all his saves. Uh, Vulnerable token is going to get popped. This would be solved if he makes all his saves again. And he takes a wound, a wound, uh-oh. Drogo is extremely unhappy. Now, regardless of how the panic and the uh, supremacy work, <clears throat> uh, 
panic is good. Also good rolls for Rich. Both are middle numbers, so he's probably going to make him reroll both. Um, panic at even is a fail. Big damage. That's significant. It does reduce the damage of returning back with Supremacy. Supremacy will only be minus three now because of uh, Intending Presence. So minus three, and I think he's barely in range. So it should be just minus three. Minus three is a pass. There's a panic token. I would make him reroll. Maybe you got a fealty in your hand to heal back those wounds. <clears throat> uh, rerolling everything, but also rolled good. Rolled into the middle. Minus three is a fail because of intimidating presence. Uh, because of no iron resolve, I should say. No iron resolve means that this is actually a fail. And does he have fealty to rub salt? All the salt. Okay, so now I think to really tie up Drogo, you throw Tywin onto the horse to prevent Drogo from retreating. But interestingly, they can just talk about what quarter Roos is in, and Tywin can claim the fourth quarter and make it nine. That would just seal the game, I think. Tywin can just claim a quarter and just make it nine. Um, yeah, I think it was a three as well. So it looks like Roost Bones just attacking back. Uh, weakened token, I think, was that a weakened token? So it just we got two hits onto a three plus save. <clears throat> it really doesn't matter a lot, I suppose. It might have mattered. <laughs> these Flavin may have killed these Screamers, actually, if, if those veterans had just exploded. Um, and Drogo's okay. <clears throat> so Drogo's okay. Because I think that would have been a one-shot, right? All eight wounds got through, and a crit fail panic is four more with Intimidating Presence. Uh, something is happening here. Berry blocking. Oh, I think they are berry blocking the... Um, Supremacy. I think they're very blocking Supremacy. Yeah. Okay, so. It's now Brett's turn. Brett will... Oh, he's taking the crown. He's not retreating with Drogo. He should retreat with Drogo, I'd say. And this means that Tywin will for sure claim a quarter. Is that Assault Orders? It is. Okay. Um, yeah, you gotta do some wounds here. You don't get the auto wound. So this is actually making Rich's play with Tywin make a lot... Oh, unfortunate. Only two hits. Brutal. This is making Rich's Tywin play make a lot more sense to keep this unit alive and healthy by reducing the damage from Expert Duelist. He does feel one that will be a panic, but they will not be killed. Panic on seven. Is a big pass. Big pass. Shouldn't say big pass. Barely a pass <laughs> is more accurate. Barely a pass is more accurate. I think now Tywin just claims a quarter, and it should be 9-3 at the end of the round. So they should have to discuss. <clears throat> this game is essentially over. There's no way Rich does not score one point next round. Uh, they should just discuss where is Roos. Tywin goes in the opposite quarter, claims a point. Is there a way? Hold on here. What if... Uh, I was going to say, what if... Yeah, if Roos was in this quarter, Tywin goes in this quarter, because the Knights are also in this quarter. So yeah, it's 9-3, and they're going to play it out, just just for the sake of it. But yeah, this, this is game. There's no way Rich doesn't score one point from a quarter, and I don't think there's a way to score seven. All right, I'm going to get my iPad ready for the post-game interview. This game, this round should be very, very quick. There's not a lot of activations that are super poignant. I wonder if Rich goes in hard to get a lot of kills off Brett. I mean, these knights are still here. Like They can probably flank or rear these, <clears throat> these Cav. Will uh, Brett get some satisfaction and kill Roos, at least? Uh, in terms of cards, I think they forgot to redraw.
being the end of the game, I don't think there's any cards that save Brett at this point, being so far behind. <clears throat> And I've learned to talk to them through Discord through my iPad and not through my laptop, since you guys can still hear them through my laptop. All right, what is the first activation looking like? Uh, Warcry is going off, looks like. Warcry. On to Roost, just to, I imagine, try and kill the unit off. Okay. Uh, yeah, and we're going predictably Barristan onto the sword, trying to finish the unit. With these tokens and Expert Duelist, he might just kill the unit. One dice to shank the Leech Lord. Leech Lord down. Seven dice hitting on threes, six hits. Yeah, with the with the panic token, you should kill. I mean, you expect to kill maybe three or four guys here, and the panic field could kill them. Only lost one. Good starting roll. This is this is the nightmare of Blood Riders. Is a unit with a three plus save. Oh, four down. So yeah, the the vulnerable doing work. The vulnerable doing work. And now with the panic token. On seven, they should probably get killed, and that'd be pretty big. It does free up uh, Drogo to do some more damage. Oh, crit fail, and they are dead. So uh, he's up to four. What I think. Ugh. Okay, so this is interesting, actually. It gives Brett some life. Probably not enough to get back in the game, because he only needs to lose by one point. But <clears throat> it's interesting, because what you do now is rich. You could charge Drogo, but Drogo can flee up the horse. However, I don't think Drogo has an ability to one-shot anything. Right? With Warcry being spent, even with Adravat, I don't think you're able to one-shot the knights because of um, Warcry being spent. And I think, actually, if you're rich and you take the knights into the front, you force... Brett onto the horse, which means he doesn't get any token play, and it gives you the heal as well, critically. So the charge is going for the knights just to tie up Drogo. He knows he knows that's the... Oh! Whoa! Okay. He's just saying, I'm just gonna kill you. Tell you what. I'm just gonna kill these guys, rob you an activation, Flademan can eat an attack. <clears throat> um, there are eight wounds left. With a failed panic, they are probably dead. Um... Good start for Rich into into eight hits. Eight hits on sixes. They could just be dead here, but the panic at minus five should be enough to finish them. Oh my god, that's eight fails. Brutal. And they're just dead. They're just dead. So that is ten. That is ten. And now it's all about quarters. Um, yeah. That is ten. I do not expect this outcome. <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, Rich and and Brett have actually played a lot one on one before, and I think, and when I say they played a lot one on one, I mean they played a lot recently one on one with this matchup, and I think Rich has won every game. Um, so it would be interesting to hear what they feel happened. Uh, he's actually putting him in a quarter. It looks like to score a point. <clears throat> Interesting. Uh, oh, wow. I guess it doesn't matter. I was going to say, like, by putting him here, you let yourself get charged, but it, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a crushing victory either way. <clears throat> uh, these are flayed men into the flank. No rerolls because of the corpse pile. Four hits only, saving on fours. Yeah, I'm excited to hear what they have to say. Oh, I think they're just calling it. Are they just calling it? 
Yeah, they don't. They can't kill Drogo, and they're just calling it. Okay, I will pop into my iPad Discord, and we'll see if they are ready to chat. BRB. Okay, so we are back, folks, and we've got uh, Brett and Rich on the line. So that was a uh, really, really interesting game. Uh, the opening moves, the, the game of cat and mouse, uh, you know, push and, and retreat was really interesting to see play out. Um, let's start with Brett. Brett, let's hear your thoughts on what happened. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I knew I was fucked. It was a matter of time, so I was kind of just playing. Maybe I should have ran away and... Just tried to play the mission or something, but with Tywin NCU and Bruce and all of that heavy cap, there's just no for my list. There's no win con. Yeah, it's it's a tough matchup for sure. I've I've played Rich a bunch of times, and uh, I was really confident in the beginning with Drogo, and Rich has taught me not to be so confident for sure. Um, I want to say, Brett, I saw a lot of great plays. You know, when you when you pop Tywin, when Rich had no hand. I thought that was brilliant. You know, he you knew that he was going to draw into probably Flayed Men, and you just had to use that resource while you still had the chance to do so. Um, mm -hmm. And, can, oh, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about the opening round where Rich counterplotted the Unstoppable Advance. That blew my brain. So, yes. <laughs> let's, let's hear about that. So, Brett plays Unstoppable Advance. Rich, yeah. what goes through your mind? I'm like, I don't want him taking three shots. Like, the archers were kind of blocked. And more more importantly, I, I did I didn't have Flayed Man uh, as no secret, so I was kind of cycling a little bit. I had the crown, so I was confident I could block it. Um, it was more I wasn't happy with my hand, so I was trying to dump all of it. Oh, okay. So then, so then Brett had a second copy, blew up yeah. the um, stakes anyway, <laughs> And yeah. his third card was Assault Orders, and... Yes. And I, I, I realized he had it, too, so I felt kind of dumb. Mm. But I was like, if he charges the poor fellow, it's not the end of the world, so I backed the knights up. So, yeah, I was thinking to myself, and Obisky has made a great point, I thought you were going to charge knights into Drogo, but the, the risk was, if he had Assault Orders, he could shift over, he would get an attack... The veterans would mm -hmm. come in with Jora, and you just explode. So you retreated, which made a lot of sense. But then you had an option as well to back with the poor fellows, but you didn't. And it seemed like, mm -hmm. in fact, you charged into the flank of the screamers, but failed the charge. Yeah, like with with poor fellows, you don't really care about failing the charge sometimes if it like gets in the way, because you're not going to fail the panic. You're going to generate yourself a token. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was kind of okay like if he had it and he wasted on poor fellows that's not the end of the world to me and if he didn't have it then who cares <laughs> right okay gotcha mm -hmm. but um, i was pretty sure he had it um yeah and i i honestly really thought about tie winning first turn and trying to kill something but the more i thought about it like i go first on the second turn if I have Tywin available, like, I was fairly confident I could kill more than one thing in a turn. And then and then you can only respawn one thing, so the tempo is, like, way in my favor. If that happened. Right. And, yeah, the chat was definitely talking about trying to get two kills of Tywin. Um, I thought you might have done a... So your knights were weakened, right? That was yeah. and And I thought what might have happened was you might have charged your knights in and then retreated with them on the horse... For mm -hmm. a fresh charge when you had the Taiwan bomb ready, but you were you were really yeah. patient, um, and it paid yeah. off for the double kill. So so well, I want I wanted the zone with with the six point Taiwan. Like I used them for the zone the whole game, um, right? Because because I did I didn't want to go behind that much just in case you know mm -hmm. I wanted to be within a point. So because... so Brett, um, you know, you mentioned that this is you know with the Taiwan NCU, it's a it's a kind of a bad matchup. Did you feel like your Grey Worm list was a worse matchup? 
Yeah, yeah because, because Tywin, Tywin makes the 10-point unit of pikemen one-shottable, too. Mm. So it's it's better. Uh, it very was a good defensive stat. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was better to try to beat the head on the the Drogo wall than, yeah, with Grey Worm, I've only got the pikemen really for offense. And again, I, I, there was no doubt Richard was running this list, and he's got two... Two units of heavy cav, and all I've really got is the pikemen. Um, the freedmen explode really easily. They don't really do much for me there. Right. That gray worm list is more for holding objectives, but again, all he's really got to do is like send in the knights or something, and then send the flaidmen in and pop Tywin, and they should kill. They should kill the pikemen. Even with even with some luck, they can just one shot them. Anyway, yeah. with just blade men, you know, you know, Brett. When I was getting ready for LVO, uh, I was expecting to play into Night's Watch. I was expecting to play into Targaryens, and after playing Rich over and over and over again, I'm like, oh my god, I have to really worry about Lannisters because Rich was just kicking my ass, and <laughs> it it made me start <laughs> playing Mod as a result. My second list um, switched over to Mod. Do you feel like how would you if you expect to play a guy like Rich at, at an event? How would you adjust your list building? Uh, I've avoided taking MOD because I think she's cheesy, but yeah, that's, yeah. it's, I think Drogo can handle just about everything, but, um, Lannisters, I know that last week's results show otherwise, but I think that I would beat that MOD list nine out of 10 times. And so I think Targaryens handle enemy MOD with Drogo and MOD handles Lannisters. And then I feel fairly confident that my Drogo list can take anything else. This is going to be the fifth time that this list has lost for me, and four of them are against lists, either this list or something similar with Tywin NCU. Yeah, I think you're I've been able to beat a couple times. <laughs> yeah, I've beaten everybody but the Lannister with Tywin NCU. Yeah, double heavy calf. Yeah, it, it was causing me so much stress, and, and Rich knows he's been beating me up hard with uh, this list as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so I would sw- I would switch to MOD. <laughs> I didn't do it in this event because I still think MOD is kind of cheesy, but in <laughs> hindsight, I should have done it. Um, right, right. I was thinking to design a list specifically to counter Lannisters. I ended up taking that Grey Worm list and switching the Flayed Men in for a dragon, which if the Grey Worm, if the Grey Worm list had a dragon, I probably would have ran it here. But um, yeah, I switched it at the last minute. And then I, I, it was like a brain fart because I forgot that I put the dragon in there specifically to deal with Lannisters. Right. But, yeah. Cool. Well, you know, that's no. a great game to watch. Um, and it was exciting. We had a lot of viewers. Uh, so thank you very much, gentlemen. Good luck on your last round. Yep. Yeah, All right. Fun. See ya. See ya. Alrighty, folks, thank you for watching. Uh, again, if you don't know, uh, there are two more games being streamed today. We've got Bogler versus Quarren. Uh, at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. And then at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we've got a uh, top table with Steve, Lord of the North, uh, versus Gamma, Gordy from the Maritime. So do uh, pop back in at those times if you want to see some more gaming. Thank you, folks. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.